us do another episode on ASU G12 exams. So in this episode, we continue looking at the August 2022 Science Paper 1, which is basically the standard or level physics. So in the first three episodes, we've covered question 1 through 12 of the multiple choice section. So in this uh, fourth part, we are going to look at question 13 through 20. So let us uh, start with question 13. A person standing 150 meters from the front of the cliff claps his hands once and hears an echo after 0 0.9 seconds. Find the speed of sound in air. So the question requires us to find the speed of sound. That's what the question requires us to do. So it's important to understand the question. How do you find a speed? So speed is equal to distance covered over time. That's speed. Then the next question is what have we been given from this formula? We've been given at the time, then we've been given the distance. Now this distance is between a person and the cliff. So let us say the cliff is here, then the person stands here, claps. Then once the sound comes here and eats this cliff, then the echo comes back. And this distance is 150 meters. Then to go and come back, the total distance covered is now basically 2 times D. Therefore, the speed now becomes 2 times distance, in this case over time. That's the D we are going to use. So this is capital D. So to just distinguish, we ensure that uh, this is capital D. Okay. Then we move to a substituting now. We substitute uh, the items. So it will be 2 multiplied by 150 over time, which is 0 0.90 seconds. So we're going to have 300 divided by 0 0.9 which will give us basically 333.3 meters per second as our answer. So if you check at the, the options, you discover that D is the correct answer. So the common mistake is someone just getting this uh, 150. So you get 150 which is just from here to here, not uh, coming back. You divide by uh, 0 0.9. Once you divide by 0 0.9, you are going to find uh, 166.7, which will be A, but that is not uh, the correct answer. So make sure that uh, you understand what is uh, happening. We look at question 14, which is A14. Which of the following does loudness of sound depend on? So basically, the loudness of sound depends on the amplitude. So amplitude so the amplitude is the answer in this case while the pitch of sound depends on the frequency so if the question i was asking you to determine or find uh, what determines uh, the pitch of sound is see the frequency then the loudness of sound is see the amplitude so the bigger the amplitude the more energy it carries hence the louder it is the lower the amplitude, the lower the energy, uh, the wave carries, and the, uh, the lower the loudness is. So basically, that's our question 14. Question A15, the following diagrams show a small compass close to a strong bar magnet. Which diagram show the collective compass direction? So basically, we are looking for the diagram which shows the collective compass direction. So, uh, the magnetic field lines move from the North Pole to the South Pole. So, if you have a magnet like this, this is North, this is South. So, they move out from this side. Then they enter the South Pole. So, they enter. That's how they move. So, the compass will always point in the direction of magnetic field line. So what you notice in this case are uh, this one 
the magnetic field are moving in this direction so this is not correct then in this one the magnetic field are moving in this direction so you see uh, perpendicular not correct uh, this one in this direction also this is moving in the perpendicular not correct so the only one which is correct moving in the direction of the magnetic field line is D so D is the correct answer let us look at question 16 a negatively charged load is held close to but not touching an insulated metal sphere as shown in the following diagram which diagram shows the correct charge distribution on the sphere so basically we just need to identify the uh, diagram which shows the collect distribution of the charge so now how do we determine the collect distribution of the charge so basically we use a uh, uh, Columbus first law of electrostatistic which states that unlike charges of the particles repel while unlike charges attract each other so what we know in this case if this is a negative this negative should attract the positive this side so here we're going to have the positives then to repel the uh, negative this direction so basically you notice that among the option this is not correct because there is no negative charges here then b is correct we have the positive and the negative this side then this one is c incorrect unless it was positively charged this load was positively charged then this was going to be correct then again this one is incorrect because there are no positives so that's our b is the correct answer so remember always to understand the colombo's first law of electrostatistic because there is always a question on this so once you understand this this will be a giveaway question if you are doubting check the last uh, papers the last papers the last five years will say that in almost every paper there is a question asking you about the distribution of the charges let us look at question a17 which of the following circuit diagrams shows all the three resistors in parallel so the question requires us to identify the three resistors that are in parallel so we talk about two types of uh, circuits the series circuit and the parallel circuit so in a parallel circuit if one component is disconnected or bent the other component will still continue receiving the current while under series if only one component is disconnected or bent the entire circuit does not work so all the appliances goes off because the components are arranged in a circular form that's how they are arranged so in this case if you look at a if uh, this uh, resistor stops working or bend then the entire security goes off so a is incorrect b if you look at b if this resistor goes off then the entire security does not work so again what you notice in this case this one is in series with these two but if this one goes off it will still be working if this one goes up it will still be working so in this case two are in parallel then if you look at c if this one goes off then the entire circuit does not work because the circuit remains incomplete so what you notice in this case is c is incorrect if you look at d d if this one goes off these two will still be working if this one goes off this one will still be working even if this one alone goes off then these two will still be uh, working so d is in parallel so d is the correct answer let us look at question a 18 an ideal transformer has an input voltage of 12 volts and an output voltage of 240 volts it has two southern turns in the primary core find the number of turns in the secondary coil 
again this is one of the most common question this question almost comes in every paper so if you understand the principle then this is a walkover question so what is the question asking us to do the question is asking us to find the number of turns in the secondary coil then what's the relationship between uh, the voltage and the number of turns in the secondary coil and also the current so the relationship is the number of 10 in the primary coil divided by the number of 10 in the secondary coil must equal to the ratio of the voltage in the primary coil then divided by the voltage in the secondary coil equals to the current in the secondary over the current in the primary so you notice that i've used the lead ink to distinguish or to know how this one differs with this one so here the primary number of coil on top voltage on top but the current is opposite current comes in down here that's how this formula is very important so once you understand that you answer any question on transformer whether they ask you to find the current or the number of turns or the voltage it will be a walkover okay so let us identify what we've been given so we've been given the input so the input voltage this is basically the primary voltage which is entering then the output this is the secondary voltage which is coming out then the number of 10 in the primary so we have this one we have this one then we have this one what we are looking for is this one this is what the question is asking us to find so we are just going to use up to here this equation up to here so we cannot use two at a, at a go so in this case then we can substitute then the number of 10 in the primary is basically 2000 then the number of 10 in the secondary is what we are looking for x then the voltage in the primary is basically 12 then the voltage in the secondary is 240 then I will cross multiply so we are going to have 12x is equal to uh, basically 2000 multiplied by 240 then we divide by 12 we divide by 12 so x is equal to uh, basically 20 20 times 2000 is basically 40,000 so 40,000 tens if you look at the options you will see that c is the correct answer we look at question 19 which of the following radioactive emissions has the strongest ionizing effect so again take time to revise on electromagnetic spectrum so in this case you notice that the one that has got the strongest ionizing effect is basically alpha so alpha has the strongest ionizing effect then gamma has got the strongest penetrating power so you need to know uh, these so basically in terms of the other two beta so beta has got weak but not as weak as in a gamma so in terms of beta we just say weak then gamma ray has got the weakest ionizing effect then beta as quote are just weak so basically this is how you answer this question we look at question 20 uh, radium has a half-life of 1600 years calculate the number of half-lives it will undergo for a hundred gram mass to reduce to 12.5 so what you notice in this case we know that half life is given by so you can do it by a formula or by just uh, iteration so let us use the formula so at the beginning we have 100 then at the end we have 12.5 so 12.5 equals to 100 then half then the half life is basically 1600 remember the question is we need to find the number of times that t can divide 1600 so once we find t then we can divide it by 1600 then as simplifying this we divide by 100 by 100 we are going to this this one is basically giving us 1 over 8 is equal to 
half to the power 1 over or t over 1600 then this one is the same as 1 over 2 to the power 3 equals 1 over 2 to the power t over 1600 you notice that this and this are the same so if these are the same by the law of indices it means uh, the powers are equal so this tells me that uh, so for t we cross multiply so t is equal to basically 3 multiplied by 1600 so you notice that we are multiplying the half life by 3 times so the number of half lives that are happening is basically just this number which is uh, 3 so if you come here you notice that a is the correct answer so without wasting much of the time so what we could have done is multiply that we are going to find 4800 then we divide by the half life which is 1600 then we are going to end up with 3 so this is the 3 that we, we have found here so basically this is how you find this answer to get uh, the optimal max so this is where section A ends please join me as we look at section B in the next episode